You're watching the AM show. It's exactly five minutes after eight. And just a little correction. Uh, this clash that happened between some NDC and NPP supporters happened in Tiraponi and not Samboba. The incident happened in Tiraponi. We're getting the confirmation from the police commander there. There will be more uh, in uh, the coming hours here on our network. But right now we've got to talk about a new documentary, a documentary produced by host of Good Evening Ghana on Metro TV, Paul Adamotri, and he's here to tell us about it. It's a political documentary. Uh, we've got the elections tomorrow, so this is timely. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Mavi. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for the opportunity. How, how is this related to the elections tomorrow? Well, we actually intended not for it to have any direct relation to the election tomorrow, so we focus on the elections that have occurred in Ghana from 1956 up until 2012. Even though it's a 60-year span, that gives us just eight elections. And um, it's eight elections because the governance was interrupted by coup d'etats. So there are four coup d'etats that we focus on as well. Now, um, we end the election 2012. And about 2012, we only say about the court and the verdict. We don't, we don't go into details. But every other election before then, we go into details, the behind the scenes, why the parties that won, won the elections, the issues that occurred before the elections. So um, we, we grabbed the footage, thankfully, of the old elections. So mm -hmm. we do have footage of, of all the old elections. And where, where do you get that from? Because that's difficult. Well, we got it. We got it. And, and, and we have it. People see it tonight. They will see that we got it. Uh, it's all not very good quality, but, but it's there. So there's black and white, and then it gets into color from mm. 1965 or so. Then we got 10 people that we interviewed who form part of the narrative, uh, including President Kufuor, for instance. We tried to get people from different sides of the historical political divide. So President Kufuor is there, Dr. Beda Samoa is there, Elizabeth Ohine is there. About Elizabeth Ohine is very significant because we found out that uh, she was the editor of the graphic in, in 1979, which was a crucial period in, in the Ghana's political history. We were disappointed to find out that there's been no female editor of the graphic since then. Mm -hmm. And so for the longest history of the Daily Graphic, there's been only one female editor, and that's Elizabeth Ohini. And, uh, <coughs> and we, so we think that maybe the graphic should have a look at it, and mm -hmm. those of you ladies in journalism should probably have a look at that as well. But so yes, Elizabeth Ohini is in there. Professor Michael Quay, because he's written a book about, about Ghanaian politics. Professor Ivan adai has also written a book, so he's there as well. We have Guzitano, about whom many people don't know much. But uh, he was very instrumental in the PNDC and DC era. Mm. And in 2000, he formed a political party, uh, leaving the NDC to form the National Reform Party, uh, which occasioned a lot of difficulty for the NDC in the 2000 election. So he's on there as well. He talks to us about, about that era. We speak to Kwabene Japon, who has been part of the MPP process since 1992. So he's also on there. So we put all this together, and then we do a narration of the actual history. And so when we, the narration gives the history, we show the footage mm. if we have it, and then we show the interviews as well. Um, so that's, that's how it's been put together. We also noticed that the beginning of Ghana's um, uh, political history in the 1950s and 60s is told only by Kwame Nkrumah. He's the only one who writes, and people around him who write. There some one or two foreigners wrote about it, but they were all focused on him. And we're thinking that it's probably time to tell the the beginning of Ghana's political history from another perspective, okay. other than in Kroma's perspective. Mm. So that's what we tried to do. So we, we, we show that at the time that Ghana got independence, the political system was not as stable as has been presented in the social studies uh, books and the government books. Mm. It wasn't stable at all. Uh, it was such, so bad that Nkrumah could not even visit certain parts of the country because of, of fear of violence. And he was prime minister like a president today. He couldn't go to those places. So the kind of animosity between politicians then is, 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 is much deeper and detailed than mm -hmm. what we actually have today. So we wanted people to see that and be able to make the comparison. Mm. How, uh, how, how long is this documentary? That's our biggest disappointment. We started by hoping to make it one hour, but we ended up 90 minutes, one hour and a half, uh, because we are telling a 60-year story. We still have to take a lot out, and what we'll do with that lot that we took out is to develop other documentaries on the various themes that mm -hmm. this one presents. So okay. we'll take, say, the Nkrumah era alone and do something about it. And so we so have this to is almost two hours? Well, it's one and a half hours for sure. Okay. It's, it's exactly one and a half hours, 90 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, what are you hoping that this story can teach the people who get the opportunity to see it? We are hoping that they will acquaint themselves with the political history of Ghana. And many people who saw it at the premiere, even though they knew the political history of Ghana, were surprised to see some of the things that we put out that actually did occur. Mm. So we think that people will have surprises, and we think that people will, have, will be 
very well educated about some of the things they've had already. And that's why we were hoping to show it today. We've been planning on this for a long time, that today being the day that political advertising cannot show mm. because it's the eve of elections. Yeah. Uh, we took the opportunity for people to see it today uh, and then they can acquaint themselves with it. So it's showing at 8 o'clock on Metro TV. It's showing on Joy News tonight. It's showing on TV Africa and it's showing on UTV as well, mm. as all, all tonight. But the Metro TV time is 8 o'clock. So how long did, you, did it take you, Paul, to put this whole documentary, you and your team, to put this together? That's, that's, that's an important question, but we don't know how to answer it because we had to draw on what we know already. Mm -hmm. uh, so in doing the script, we had to draw on uh, even our social studies uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. So we drew on a lot of intellectual information that we already had. In terms of physically putting it together, um, we have been working for about six months to put the footage together, mm -hmm. to cut us from a three-hour documentary to uh, two and a half hours, and now on to 90 minutes. We've got the trailer. I want you to introduce it. Okay, so this trailer just expresses the various aspects of the documentary. Um, and we do, we put some aesthetics in there. It's a film, so we make it look like a film. So we have some outside shots. We go to the Independent Square in the night and film it mm. and put it in there so that people can enjoy it, not just as political information, but also as a film. And so the important uh, infrastructure around Ghana that represents the heritage of Ghana have been captured in the Flagstaff House, mm. Independence Square, Burma Camp, and all of that. So okay. here, here's the trailer. This journey we chose to set the souls of our feet on is as wide as the breath of the wild, woven with the fibers of treachery and flabbergast. The story of political context in Ghana begins in 1951. Following a rejection of the Seal and Benz constitution, plans were hurried towards a full local legislative assembly in 1951 and in 1954. If Nkuma could not come, he saw it. Oh God, when? After Bafu's death, we saw that, oh, I see, if the scene has become killing, then we shall also wake up and kill. Then we started. Will be laid upon his palm, and he'll be issued with as many ballot papers as there are candidates. Then he goes into a screen compartment, that's where his, his voting is secret, and he will select the ballot paper of the candidate for whom he wishes to vote, put that in an envelope. As you go home, remember. That the revolution continues unabated. People thought it was a jumper who had done it. But the real beginnings of that bumper was in the rural development coupled with modernized agriculture. And Prime Lieutenant Rawlings said to me that, oh, he was going to be the officer who was going to lead the guard of honor at the airport. Could I please? and make sure that uh, the graphic cameras capture this. The UNC, the party for you. Vote for UNC, the party for you. Robbing the best. Those two people, if either of them had stayed in power without any military intervention, this country wouldn't be where it is at the moment. And uh, this was the first day and filing was for the next Tuesday. And we still didn't have a vice presidential candidate. Professor Mills had just put in a bid 
for the vice chancellorship of the University of Ghana. And he had lost by one vote. Obed Asamoah was in the meeting, but he left before the meeting ended. So as soon as the meeting ended, I dashed to his office. He was attending the general He said, oh, baby, this Professor Mills that I was talking about, don't you think he's the person that we are looking for? Obed said, Jesus Christ, Kamina, you are right. You know, he's brilliant. I taught him. Wait a minute. When we win, I want the victory to be for every Ghanaian, no matter which party they are in. Because God is denying people about 30% of their right to vote. It's a serious business. What something could be for you? Say you could say that. does not say. Before it's a regular constitutional state by the Constitution. Uh, the Electoral Commission declares if you disagree, you go to court. So voices of political campaign here in our country dates back 1966, Paul. Five, six, actually. Oh, 1956. Uh, and are you going to add what we're coming to witness uh, tomorrow to this? That's, that's someday? the that's in, intention. And that uh, we want to be able to do that so that by the time we've done election 2028, 20, we're going to get a single document of 56 all the way. So after every election, we will sort of put it together and add as well. Mm. That's, that's the intention. Okay, but so but what, 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 what was your interest? Why did you want to so badly do this? Because I thought we needed a document that has all the facts about elections. And also, we needed something that will put into perspective Ghana's political history. Mm. The Americans have that. And I was fascinated by watching the American election, the analysis of the American election. And you find a 26-year-old in the studio and she's talking about Lyndon Johnson won Florida because of X, Y, Z. Lyndon Johnson won Florida in 1965. She was not born, but she knows it because it's a document that you can go and pick it up and, and read it. We don't have that. Mm. Apart from the books that Nkrumah wrote, the next uh, um, account that is written about Ghana, which is provided by Professor Michael Quay and Dr. Beda Samoa and Professor Adai Mensah, all don't cover the period of Nkrumah. So, you know, our country, we don't have a lot of book writers. We thought about this as a book project, but we're thinking that in modern day, if you put it in, in audiovisual, it's easier for people to acquaint themselves with mm -hmm. it rather than put it in a big book for them to try and read it when they have many other things to read. Mm. Uh, you monitor a lot of the political activities here in our country. We've got elections tomorrow. Mm. How would you describe the mood ahead of tomorrow? Well, we're back at where we are. It's NDC and MPP, one of them is going to win. Mm. So, uh, the same thing. Uh, I think that the transparency of the Electoral Commission this time is something to write home about. I read today that they'll be holding press conference every two hours, which is significant. Yesterday they published the full total number of people who voted special at the special vote. voting mm -hmm. and, and also gave a categorization in terms of regions. So I, I get the sense that there's a very transparent Electoral Commission. I think people will go and vote and there'll be no violence and there'll be no war. I don't know what the outcome would be. Uh, but we know that the NDC and MPP will be there competing at the, at the end of the day. And, and so we hope for the best. Well, what's the sense that you get? An outright uh, one touch for whoever wins? Or there's a, a run up somewhere? The parties always talk about uh, one touch for, for either of them. But I think they also prepare for a run off anyway. I mean, their communications team and their logistics team and all of that always have the run off at the back of your mind because it's a, it's a statistical possibility. So they always prepare for it, but they will say publicly that they're expecting a one-touch victory. I think we wouldn't know until the votes start coming in. And we are looking actually at the swing regions. So if Brown Hafo comes in, Central comes in, and Western comes in, the way that it is turning out will inform us 
uh, whether we are headed for a runoff or whether there will be an outright victory. I can't wait for the moment. Finally, December 7th is upon us, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm terribly excited. Tomorrow night will be another big night of election coverage, and I enjoy it. Yeah. There are people who are thinking because of the uh, challenges with a special voting exercise in terms of uh, those officers who showed up and couldn't find their names will probably have similar interruptions tomorrow. What do you say? I think it's a genuine concern, uh, but the Electoral Commission has assured all of us that hopefully that shouldn't happen. Uh, we don't expect to vote a second day as occurred in, in 2012. By now, the biometric machines have been tested over two, three elections, including the district assembly elections. So we expect that it will work. Um, if it doesn't work, it will be very disappointing. But we really hope that we don't have to vote a second day. Hmm. Back to voices of political campaign in Ghana. You say start showing today. Yes, tonight. Okay, tonight. We'll show it on Joy News. We'll give you the details as to what time we're showing it, but it's also being it's, shown it's on, showing Metro on Metro TV. TV at 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock, And okay. it's going to be showing on TV Africa and on UTV um, as well. Okay, so this is the kind of documentary or film. What do you get, popcorn or what, to keep you company whilst you watch? We hope that it's sufficiently engaging for all, all demographics of people, whether you, you are the politician, whether you are the journalist, whether you are the corporate person, whether you are the designer, whether you are the advertiser. We bring in all strands of Ghanaians, Ghanaian political history for everyone to have something in it that concerns them. So you see fashion, you know, you, you see the Old women fashion. and the way they were dressed and the way they were singing in the street. You will see advertising, you will see how the billboards look like and you will hear the campaign songs. Mm -hmm. You will see political content speech delivered by, by people. You will see campaign jamborines. And so all the demographics would have something to engage them for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. We sincerely hope that they will like it. Okay, this is one that you gather the entire family, the mm -hmm. adults and all the children in the family to yeah. see. Paul, thank you so much for passing through our show. It's a pleasure. Congratulations on this documentary. I am looking forward to seeing it, really. Thank you. Thank All you, right. Mamami. All right. Stay with us. The AM Show. We've got uh, a lot more updates to give you right here on the AM Show. Stay with us.